Hey there, Maniacs viewers, you're watching the Main Man channel. It's not just the name, it's the way of life. You got to improvise, adapt, and overcome each and every day just to make it in this cruel old world. Now, the breath saying that. So, that being said, appreciate y'all watching. Please make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Check me out on all my social media. Links are in the description. And uh, make sure you sign up for the Glock 19 giveaway and whatever month knife giveaway is going on right now. That being said, a little bit out of breath because I've been moving a few boxes around in the office. And I just woke up and been running outside to start the smoker. We're going to smoke a roast today. And uh, just now getting my first cup of coffee. So that's what this is. But anyways, I won't keep a lot. Uh, keep y'all long. Uh, top of today's video is is a uh, written house trial update, and I gotta say, I'm even more worried now than I was. Here's why: the jury, two members of the jury, reported last night. As far as I know, it came from a U.S. Marshal, who's there, I reckon. But two of the members of jury reported last night that uh, they were worried about coming to a decision. And the reason they were worried about coming to a decision, they were afraid the media, slash fake news media, slash left-controlled, Bloomberg-controlled, Soros-controlled, China-controlled, UN controlled, leftist elitist controlled media would leak their names to the public after you know they make their decision. If they, you know, if they decide uh, that Kyle is not guilty, well, the problem with that is, is uh, the fact that. Uh, They're worried about this, their safety and their, their family's safety. And uh, I'd say rightly so. George Floyd's nephew has been threatening them. Several groups have been threatening them. Antifa has been threatening them. Uh, several groups around the country. Uh, they've had uh, Hollywood stars saying, do the right thing, find Kyle guilty and everything. And all kinds of stuff. So, what's the world coming to when all these people were threatening these jurors, folks? You're talking about a big part of the country doing it. And a big, people with a big following doing it. What's the world coming to? When the life of a sex offender, a violent sex offender, who would have probably abuse more children and uh, another low life and the injury of another another couple of low lives what's what's the uh, why are they more important than this young man who's got his life ahead of him? I mean I just don't understand what people are thinking it's unfortunate that anybody lost their lives. I don't want to see anybody lose their lives. But he defended himself and a couple of low lives, especially that Rosenbaum sex offender dude, is not on the streets anymore. And he just did what he was what what he was supposed to do, you know, as far as he just did what he can to defend himself. And the thing about this is Rosenbaum and some of the others talked, and they picked Kyle because they thought he'd be an easy target. Oh, he's just a little kid right there. We'll make him cry, get that gun away from him, and uh, he's the little target, the easy one to pick on. I'm going to tell you something, folks. Criminals only attack when they've got the advantage. The advantage in numbers or the ad, uh, you know, they, they can get the drop on somebody. Because criminals are cowards. And what they were trying to do, they were trying to intimidate Kyle and 
and, you know, get him to break down, and, they, and then they chased him and threatened to kill him. And I think they did have intentions of killing him, and they thought he was an easy target. But that's be, that being said, we're going way off the subject of what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is, is two jurors are afraid for their lives and afraid for the lives of their families, and rightly so, because of the way what's going on now. I don't think that judge has done anything particularly wrong. He seems to be a fair and honest judge. Uh, he don't seem like the smartest guy. That I, I mean, and I've dealt with some judges in my life, folks. Uh, I've been around three great judges. You know, uh, actually been part of the trials or uh, jury selection process or member of the jury myself. I've been around three great judges from this area, and this guy seems a little bit cartoony, maybe a little bit left-leaning, but he seems pretty fair, but I've got to knock him on one thing. Yeah, the jury would still have access to the media and everything, but I, there wouldn't be no phones in that place. There wouldn't be no laptops in that place in the courtroom. Uh, the personal phones of the jurors would have been uh, confiscated. Those jurors would have been sequestered to a, a hotel room and they'd been took to a restaurant where they could eat or whatever and maybe takeout brought to them, but they'd be completely sequestered. This is a high profile, very important case. And why they weren't sequestered like that, I don't know. Okay, so let's go back. This has been probably, I'd say, 30 years ago now. But my grandmother, she got, uh, she uh, got picked for jury for a very high profile case. And... They were in the hotel room, and they weren't allowed to call or hardly anything. I don't, I don't remember what all the restrictions were, but they were taken straight from the uh, place to the hotel room. I think they may have been took to some restaurants, but that was about it. But they were escorted in a bus, in a van, from the courthouse to the hotel room. Okay, and the reason that was, because that was a high-profile case for this, this area, and there was a lot of family members on both sides of the board, and they didn't want nobody in, you know, getting hurt or anything like that, and there could have been some violence if they hadn't done it this way. So why didn't they do it this way with the Kyle Rittenhouse case? I don't like it, folks. I don't like that jurors would have to be sequestered and lose some of their rights while they're on the jury, but... When you're on the jury, it's your civic duty to do what you're supposed to do, according to the Constitution of the United States of America. And uh, I've been on a jury. Now, this jury I was on, it was just a one-day thing. We weren't sequestered. We took a lunch break. Uh, we come back. They finished the case up real quick, and uh, we made the, you know, we made a decision quick. And uh, everything. But the thing about it is, it wasn't nothing like this. But like I say, my granny, she was in a big high-profile case. A lot, not even nowhere near as high-profile as this. Just high-profile for the area. Meaning family members on both sides of the board. And they sequestered her. Back and forth in the hotel room. That's, and hardly no outside contact. I think she was allowed to call my grandpa. But when she called my grandpa, uh, there was an armed officer there watching her this is the way this should have been done u.s marshals should have been uh escorting these to and from the hotel and then you know everything like that this is how this should have been done so i gotta kind of i'm kind of disappointed in the judge that this wasn't done so what i'm worried is you know all you have to have is one bad apple okay if you have one bad apple and you leave it in there too long it can spoil the whole bunch. So that being said, 
There's two bad apples in this group. They're not really bad apples. I can't really say that they're bad apples, but they're afraid. And they have every right to be afraid because there have been people intimidating these jurors. I mean, you know, on the media and everything. So that being said, folks, you got to look at it like this. I can't totally knock them from being like that. And I, I can't totally knock the judge, but I do believe he could have went about this a little bit better. And I think this could have been handled a little bit better. And those two jurors, they could convince more jurors, yay. If we convict this boy, uh, people are going to burn our houses down and attack our kids and attack our family and friends. That's what I'm worried about. And with my verse, Kyle Rittenhouse video, I, I, you know, I expressed some of that, but uh, it's looking bad, folks. It's looking bad for Kyle, in my opinion. And I'm worried. I'm worried about the state of our judicial system, the state of our world, the state of our country, and it's just looking bad, folks. And I don't like to be the negative guy. I don't like to be. The I don't like to be the fear-mongering guy, but it's just how I see it, folks, and I like to stay positive and have a positive attitude on everything, but I, I just can't on this right now. Uh, I'm the kind of type, you know, prepare for the worst, pre you know, hope for the best, prepare for the worst, and maybe it'll turn out okay kind of guy. You know, I'm always prepared for the most negative outcome, try to be, because, you know, it is what it is. That's just how I think. And I love y'all. Y'all the best people in the world. God bless you. I pray for Kyle. Y'all pray for Kyle. Y'all pray for the juries. Y'all pray for all the members. They, they, you pray for his legal team. Pray for that judge. Pray for the families, the juries, and all the families of the the uh, his legal team, the judge, and everybody, and Kyle's family, and everybody. Pray for him, for protection, and uh, nothing bad happens to him. Uh, nothing bad comes out of this, folks. Love y'all. I'll catch y'all next time. God bless you.